Have you ever turned on your tap and wondered if the water would always be there? It's a thought most of us push away, but for millions of Americans, especially in the Western United States, this isn't a hypothetical question. It's a looming reality. We're not just talking about a dry summer or a bad year for snow. We're talking about something much bigger, something scientists call a mega drought. And today, we're going to unpack what that means for you, for the country, and for our future. So, what exactly is a mega drought? Simply put, it's a drought that is exceptionally severe and lasts for decades, sometimes even centuries. And right now, the American West is in the grip of the driest 22-year period in at least 1,200 years. That's not a typo. 1,200 years. This isn't just a natural cycle. Scientists have concluded that about 40% of the severity of this current drought can be blamed on human-caused climate change. Higher temperatures mean more evaporation from soil and reservoirs and less snowpack in the mountains, which is crucial for replenishing rivers in the spring and summer. The heart of this crisis beats along the Colorado River. This mighty river system provides water to 40 million people across seven states and parts of Mexico. It irrigates millions of acres of farmland that feed the nation. And for decades, we've been taking more water out of the river than nature puts back in. The result? Our two largest reservoirs, Lake Mead and Lake Powell, have dropped to historic, dangerously low levels. You've probably seen the pictures. The white bathtub rings staining the canyon walls, showing just how far the water has fallen. These aren't just scenic reservoirs. They are the water savings accounts for the entire Southwest. And right now, those accounts are nearly empty. When you see a bathtub ring at Lake Mead, you're not just seeing a water problem. You're seeing an energy problem. The Hoover Dam at Lake Mead and the Glen Canyon Dam at Lake Powell generate huge amounts of clean hydropower. As water levels drop, the pressure on the turbines decreases, and so does the electricity they produce. If the levels fall below a certain point, the dams could stop generating power altogether. This is what's known as Deadpool. This would create an energy crisis for millions who rely on that affordable electricity. But the impact stretches far beyond just taps and light switches. Let's talk about food. California's Central Valley, often called America's food basket, relies heavily on water from these strained systems. It produces a huge portion of the fruits, nuts, and vegetables we all buy at the grocery store. When farmers don't get enough water, they have to let their fields go fallow. Less water means less food, and less food means higher prices for all of us at the checkout counter. This isn't a future problem. It's happening right now. Farmers are making agonizing choices, sacrificing some crops to save others, and many smaller family farms are being pushed to the brink. The crisis also ignites what some are calling water wars. The Colorado River's water was divided up a century ago in 1922, but that agreement was based on an unusually wet period in history. They allocated more water than the river typically carries. For decades, states have been battling over their share. Now, with the river shrinking, these tensions are boiling over. Federal authorities have had to step in, demanding unprecedented cuts in water use from states like Arizona, Nevada, and California. It's a high-stakes negotiation where the future of cities and entire industries hangs in the balance. Who should cut back? The cities with growing populations, or the farms that have seen your water rights and feed the country? There are no easy answers. And what about the environment? Rivers aren't just plumbing systems for humans. They are living ecosystems. Low water flows mean warmer water temperatures, which can be lethal for fish like salmon and trout. Wetlands that support migratory birds are drying up. The Great Salt Lake in Utah is shrinking to record lows, exposing a lake bed laced with arsenic and other heavy metals. When the wind blows, this toxic dust can be carried into the air breathed by residents of Salt Lake City. The ecological domino effect of a mega drought is vast and devastating. So, this all sounds pretty bleak, right? And it is. This is one of the most serious challenges facing the United States in the 21st century. 
but despair doesn't solve problems. Innovation and action do, and there is hope. We are seeing a massive shift in how we think about water. Cities are getting smarter. Las Vegas, for example, has become a world leader in urban water conservation. They've banned grass in new developments, pay residents to tear out their thirsty lawns, and have implemented aggressive water recycling programs. They've proven that you can grow your population while drastically cutting your overall water consumption. Other cities across the West are following suit. Investing in leak detection technology, promoting water-efficient appliances, and rethinking what a beautiful, sustainable city looks like. It doesn't have to be a lush green lawn that belongs in England. Technology is also playing a huge role. Desalination, the process of turning salt water into fresh water, is becoming more efficient and affordable. While it's still energy intensive and not a silver bullet, it's becoming a viable part of the water portfolio for coastal communities. Even more promising is water recycling. Advanced purification plants can take wastewater and treat it to a level that's purer than the original river water, making it perfectly safe to drink. The yuck factor is a psychological hurdle, but the technology is sound. And it's essentially creating a new, drought-proof water source. Agriculture, which uses about 80% of the water in the West, is also at a turning point. We're seeing a boom in precision irrigation technologies like drip irrigation which delivers water directly to a plant's roots, cutting waste from evaporation and runoff. Farmers are using sensors and satellite data to know exactly when and how much to water their crops. There is also a growing movement to switch to less thirsty crops that are better suited for an arid climate. So what can we, as individuals, do? It can feel overwhelming, but our collective actions matter. It starts with being conscious of our own water footprint. Simple things like fixing leaky faucets, taking shorter showers, and only running full loads of laundry and dishes make a real difference when multiplied by millions of people. If you have a yard, consider native drought-tolerant plants instead of a big green lawn. And most importantly, stay informed. Understand where your water comes from. Support policies and leaders who take water conservation seriously. The solutions to the mega drought won't come from one single source. It will require a massive collective effort from governments, industries, farmers, and every single one of us. The era of cheap, abundant water in the American West is over. We are now in an era of limits, an era that demands difficult choices, painful cuts, and radical innovation. The mega drought is a slow motion crisis one that's easy to ignore until the day the tap runs dry. But by understanding the challenge and embracing the solutions that are already here, we can secure a more sustainable water future. We have to, because in the end, water is life, and it's something we simply cannot live without. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more deep dives into the issues that shape our world. And let me know in the comments below what S1 change you can make to conserve water in your daily life. I'd love to hear your ideas. See you in the next one.